Hello and welcome to this webinar. My name is Anas Sabah and I'm a solutions architect here with AWS. In this webinar, I'm going to talk about securing your resources with geographic restrictions and how you can implement them on AWS. So let's get started. In today's webinar, I'm going to talk about what is geographic restrictions and what are the common use cases. Then we are going to explore the geographic restrictions on AWS and what are the services that can support them. Then we're going to look at reference architecture or implementation examples. Later, we'll jump into the console and do a step-by-step -step demo to see how we can implement geographic restrictions with different AWS services. And finally, we are going to wrap up this webinar with a few references. So geographic restrictions is providing a service to specific users based on their locations. You can think of geo-blocking in terms of school districts. If you live within a certain community, you can send your children to a particular school and have access to that district resources. So it is granting or denying access to digital resources, services, or applications based on the user's geographic location. It is the practice of geo-blocking or geofencing. By the way, geofencing is creating virtual geographic boundaries and controlling access or delivering content based on whether the user is inside or outside those boundaries. This is important in industries like media streaming, uh, e-commerce, online gaming, etc. Now, how do we identify user location? Mostly from their IPs. Each public IP address has a geolocation information associated and service provider can check the user's IP against a geo database. This will help them determine the user's location based on that database. Then, of course, based on those locations, you can have rules to allow or deny services to those users. Let's take a look at this simple diagram. Let's say we have a server and we have users or clients coming from different locations. On the server, we have rules to allow users from location two and location four, and also deny service for any user that's coming from location one and location three. So when they establish the connection or they ask for the service, users from location one and location three will, deny, will be denied those services, while the users from location two and location four will be able to see those content or get the service from that server. So what are the common use cases? If you have a content in different languages and you want to present the content in a language based on the visitor locations, or maybe for streaming services to restrict content based on location or maybe licensing agreement. Also for online ga uh, gambling and gaming platform that sometimes needs to comply with certain local rules. We also see e-commerce website that offer different products or pricing based on different locations. Finally, think about the news and media websites that restrict access to certain regions. And of course, this is not all the use cases. There are more, but this is the most common use cases I see with my customers. Now let's take a look at the AWS services that can help you implement geographic restrictions. First is Amazon Route 53. It is a highly available and scalable DNS service. It has different DNS routing policies like failover routing policy, latency-based routing policy, and others, including geolocation routing. So geolocation routing allows you to define multiple DNS records for the same domain name, but pointing to different servers, and the users will be routed to one of those servers based on their geographic locations. For example, I can have three servers. One is dedicated to US users, second is dedicated to Asia users, and third is assigned to the rest of the world. So I can create three geolocation records for the same domain name, each associated with a geographic location and pointing to the desired servers. So now when the users come from US, they get routed to server one. And if the user comes from Asia, they get routed to server two. And if they come from any other location, they get routed to server three. This is called default record which catches any request coming from any other location that was not specified in other records. If you don't use default record, the users outside the specified locations would receive no IP addresses, which means you technically restrict their access to your services. Second service we can use is AWS WAF. WAF is a layer seven web application firewall that 
enables you to protect web applications from web attacks. Basically, it allows you to create rules to allow, block, or monitor web requests based on conditions you define. So with WAF, you can create more sophisticated geographic rules where you can block certain region, but still allow a small set of IPs within that region. Take this example. Say you only operate in Europe and just got one single customer in the US. So you can create a rule to block requests coming from the US, but at the same time, the rule allows just your client IP addresses. Finally, you can implement geographic restrictions using Amazon CloudFront. It is a content delivery network or CDN service that helps you distribute static and dynamic content quickly and reliably with high speed. It has a feature of either allowing or blocking requests based on user's location. So it has either allow list or deny list. Now you might ask, which service should I use? The answer is it depends on your architecture. It depends on your requirement and it depends on your use case. There is no one size fits all. They can be used independently or they can be used in tandem as we are going to see in the following example architectures. Now, let's take a look at a few reference architectures, a few examples. In this example, the services are running out of a single public instance with a public IP, and users are directly accessing the service. To implement geographic restrictions, you can use Route 53 with geolocation routing to restrict access for certain users in certain locations. In this example, the services are running on a fleet of instances, it could be also containers with ECS or EKS. Those services are front-ended with an application load balancer. Here you can also use Route 53 to implement the restrictions and WAF to protect against web attacks like cross-site scripting and SQL injection in addition to geographic restrictions. You don't have to use both, but you can achieve more when you have them. For example, let's say you need to provide the service to North and South America users only. On top of that, you need to block users from two countries in South America. If you choose one service, you'll have to create a lot of DNS records and long rules, but with both, you can filter out users from North America and South America using Route 53 with two records, one for each continent, and then have WAP block only two countries in South America. Third example we have today, Say you have a cloud front with multiple origins, such as S3 and application load balancer. It could be more, it could be less. In this example, you can use cloud front allow list to allow certain countries, if you have a short list of countries, or use block list to block users from certain countries, again, if you have a shorter list of countries that you need to block. Same as last example, you can incorporate other services like Route 53 and WAP to implement more complex geographic restrictions. Please note that if you use WAP with CloudFront, CloudFront geo restrictions rules would kick in first and filter out users based on the allow or block list. Then CloudFront would forward the allowed request to WAP for further inspection. All right, it's time for the demo. Let me show you how can you implement geographic restrictions on the three AWS services we discussed. Now I'm on the AWS console and within Route 53, I'll go to the hosted zone choose my hosted zone, and then going to create a record. For the record name, I will give it geo. You can give it any name that you like, WW, API, anything that you're planning to use. So as we said, we need to create multiple records with the same name pointing to different targets with different locations associated. So now I'm using record one. In this example, I'm going to create two records, one for North America and the second for South America continent. You can create records more uh, granular for countries. And also within the US, you can go more granular with the state. So you can choose a state, like records based on the state. So here I'm going to choose my first server, let's say 10.10.10.10. And for the TTL, you can give it the same or lower it. It's your choice. For routing policy, I'm going to choose geolocation. And now for the location, as we said, you have continents, you have countries and region. And also for the US, you'll have US states, so you can choose states. 
So back here, I'm going to choose the first one for North America. Health check ID, if you want to associate this record with a health check, it's optional. And then the record ID, it's something that's like a annotation or a note that you need to add to this. Uh, any text that can identify this record. So for me, I would just put North America. And then I will add another record. Again, I will use the same exact name. Make sure you use the same exact name. Now, I'm going to point this record to a different server. Let's say it's 20 to 20. Detail, change it to geolocation. And then for the location now, I'm going to choose South America. I'll check is optional for the record set. I'll say South America. So as you can see, record number one, geo.anydomain.com. I have server number one, geolocation associated this record with location North America continent, and I gave it an ID, anything I can specify. Like you can literally put anything here you like. And then the record number two is the same exact name, but now it's pointing to server number two with different IP address, routing policies, geolocation. Now the association, uh, the location associated is South America and the record ID again, anything I can put in here. Then I'll click create record. And that's it. Now I have two records. One is for North America and one for South America. So if the users are coming from North America, they will be routed to the first IP address, which is 10.10.10.10. .10 if they come from South America, they will be routed to server number two, which is uh, which has the IP address of 20.20.20.20. .20 As we said, there is the default route, which is optional. Let's say you want to catch all any other requests coming from anywhere outside of those two continents. Right now, they are going to receive no IP addresses. They will be blocked by default. But let's say you have a server that can say, like it has a web page that says, this service is not available in your uh, in your region or in your location. So you can create that catch all record and say, okay, this is the default record and this is going to point to server number three. So we can do that. Again, you create the record, you give it the same name. And now this is the server that is available for all other regions. Again, you change it to geolocation. For the location, you choose default. And you can say catch all. So as you see here, three different records with three uh, same name, and then one is default, one is for North America, and one for South America. That's it for Route 53. Now it's time for uh, WAF. So now I'm in WAF console. You can go to the web ACLs. Here I have my web ACL. Click on that, and I need to add a rule for geolocation restrictions. So I go to rules. I click add rule. You have managed rules you can add, or you can add your own rules. So we're going to add our own rules. The rule type, we're going to choose rule builder. We're going to build it ourselves. We give it a name. The type, you have regular or rate based. So we choose the regular rule. And regular rule is going to apply always. In rate based, it means it's going to look at that source IP and it's going to limit or throttle that request based on the number of requests coming over a period of time. Here, if the request matches a statement, so we're going to create a statement, you have the option to create multiple statements and do match all with the and, or you can do the or, meaning you have multiple statements and you do the or between them, or you can say it doesn't match the statement. So you can see you can have more sophisticated rules. For the purpose of this demo, we're going to do a simple one. If it matches the statement and our statement says, if the request is originating from a country in, and here we can choose the countries. I'm going just to use any random country. And then scroll down. Here you can choose between if the request is originating from the source IP address, or if we need to look at the IP addresses in the header. Why that is important? Because sometimes there are CDNs or proxy networks in front of our resources. They are receiving the traffic and forwarding that to us. 
So we might be always looking, if we choose source IP and we know there's a CDN in front of our resources, that means we are always checking the IP addresses of the CDNs, which doesn't make a lot of sense. We need to look at the source IP address which is going to be in headers. The CDNs will add those IP addresses in the headers. But if we know there, there will be no CDNs and the users will come in and connect to our services directly, so we can look at the source IP addresses in the request. Then the actions, you can allow or block, or you can set the rule to count. You want to see how many requests are coming from those specific countries, or you can forward it to a capture or to a challenge. So for this demo, I'm going to choose block and just click add rule. Here you validate your rule, and if everything is good, if you have other rules, you can move it up for the priority, and then you click save. And that's it. Now our web ACL for our WAF has this particular rule to implement geolocation restrictions based on the countries that we choose. Now let's switch over to the CloudFront console. This is my distribution. If you click on the distribution, you go to the security tab, and down here you see CloudFront geographic restrictions. You expand it, and you click Edit. Right now there is no restrictions. As we mentioned earlier, you can choose allow list or you can choose block list. So let's say I'm going to choose allow list. Again, you choose the countries. I'm going to randomly choose countries. And that's it. And I click save changes. That's it. You can see here now my CloudFront has those restrictions allow list and allowing those three particular countries. Let's switch back to our slide deck. Here are a few references to read more about geographic restrictions with Amazon Route 53, with CloudFront, and with AWS WAF. With that, I would like to thank you so much for watching, and I hope this webinar was useful to you. Bye for now, and have a great rest of the day.